Welcome to a uni in Bolivia. We're about to start a three day adventure across the salt flats. We are very excited for it. We're going with the company Red Planet Expeditions, one of the better companies that do it down here. The adventure's about to start right now. Right now we're exploring the train cemetery and it's pretty cool. The train's about 30 years old, they're all rusted out. crazy being here, you see this place in photos everywhere and then you finally get out here, uh, it's really close to uni, the main town, which we didn't expect. B, it's bigger than I thought it would be. And then C, there's a lot more people than we thought too. I mean, it is a popular place in Bolivia, but super photogenic and it's really cool. It's like this mad urbex kind of urban exploring environment. It's a lot of fun crawling around all these trains. Walk around a salt processing plant now. This is where they collect all the salt from the salt flats. They bring it here and they dry it out, and they clean it, and they sort it out into different packaging so they can then sell it onto different markets. And it's like a pretty big setup here. No one's working today, day off. Fun facts about the salt flats they are about 11,000 square kilometers which makes them the biggest in the world. They're really flat. They're made of salt. They're white. Some volcanoes around, which is cool. And uh, this is where you go to take those perspective, long, long distance depth perception shots I was talking about. We now made it to Incahuasi, which is like a cactus island in the middle of the salt flats and we're going to spend about 45 minutes hiking around it. It costs 30 Bolivianos to get inside and it's, it's literally an island covered in cactus. So when we got to we're staying in a salt hotel in the middle of Bolivia, we thought it was going to be quite basic, but we've just shown up at our place and it is phenomenal. This place is incredible. It's huge, spacious. So the reason it's a salt hotel, these are all actual salt bricks, which is kind of cool. But I mean like, check these couches out. There's electricity. We, we did not expect this. And then wait till you see our room. This is unreal. Woo! Look how big and bright it is. We're in a salt hotel. We have our own bathroom. Who would have thought? Like... So when we signed up, we're not doing a private tour. We're not doing a luxury tour. This is just the standard, I guess, salt flats tour that you do. But we signed up with Red Planet Expeditions and it's like 210 bucks. And everyone that we talked to said you get real basic accommodation and then we've shown up here and we're just like what is going on and then bathroom hot shower in the middle of the salt flats unreal dinner's just about to be ready so we're gonna go get into that i think we've got cold beers as well so so far the first day salt flats in bolivia it's turning out to be pretty damn cool morning guys well that was a lovely night last night food is really good Slept in that salt palace and it was awesome. Beds are really comfortable and warm. We're loading up the trucks now. We're gonna hit the road. It's day two here in the salt flats and we're gonna go check out some mad things along the way. National Park, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And see what else we can get. We've driven about 20, 30 minutes from the accommodation and we've stopped off at this little town. It's the last place that we can buy any souvenirs, any snacks or anything for the rest of the day. So we've actually stocked up on We've got some cactus beer, some coca leaf beer, as well as some... Yeah. Yay, the boys are getting into we've it all, already. We've all got, grabbed some because we're going to the hot springs tonight. Some have already opened there. 
We made a little stop off now at this valley and it's filled with llamas. There are just llamas everywhere. They belong to some farmers, so they've got tags on their ears and there's just llamas hanging out. That's one of the cool things about when you travel around Bolivia is the different wildlife you get that you don't get in a lot of other places. Lunchtime, we have quinoa, chicken, and veggies. So we've been driving around all day now. Something that just occurred to us, we haven't seen any other cars all day. We're literally the only people out here, which is pretty damn cool, considering that it's one of the most popular places to visit in Bolivia. It's been a fun day, we've seen some flamingos, some really cool lagoons, some really interesting rock formations, and it's only like halfway through the day, so there's still a few more things to see. surrounded by all these really cool volcanic rock formations that have been born this way through weather and sand and rain and wind and all kinds of crazy stuff. Snow falling into cracks, melting, freezing, melting, freezing, separating the rocks. It's a really cool place to go and climb up to. Pulled up at the control booth for National Park. You've got to pay your National Park entrance fee when you get here. It's 150 Bolivianos, which is a little on the pricey side, but it's a pretty magical place, so we've got to pay it. We knew we had to pay it when we got here, so no issues from us. And now we're about to enter the park and go check out some cool things. We're here at 4,900 meters above sea level and we're standing on top of this volcanic crazy activity. There's mud bars and there's boiling water and there's all this steam coming off and it smells like sulfur. And there's some mini guys as well. And this place is really trippy. It's like, uh, it's like being on another planet. Day two has just about come to an end. We've pulled up into the hostel and we we're in for another really cool surprise. So before we signed off for the tour, we got warned that the accommodation is gonna be very, very basic, that we're gonna to have to have like six people to a room, shared dorm style, which we're totally cool with. But we get to our hostel and we get told the new part of it's been built, which means we get our own room. To ourselves. So cool. Stoked to be in here. The bathroom is not built yet, but obviously it will be in the future. So we just have to share a bathroom down the hall, which we're totally cool with. We're, we're winning. And it's a little dark in here right now because I haven't turned the electricity on yet, but that's meant to come on when the sun goes down. So and the that's all good. And done. Um, yeah. Our own room, double bed, winning. Let's go get some tea and coffee. Day three here in our Bolivian adventure, so to pack up, we're gonna start making our way back to a uni. We've got a few stops to make off along the way. Last night was a lot of fun. We couldn't do any filming because it was too dark, but there's a hot spring right near the hostel here. And we went down there, chilled out. It was only like a dollar US to like go hang out in this mad hot spring beneath the stars and no moon last night, so it was beautiful. And now we're in the Salvador Dali Desert. So it's named after this because I believe that there was a lot of inspiration behind Salvador Dali's work here, even though he's never actually been here. And there's some cool volcanoes and some cool rock formations out there across the desert. And
Now we're at the Green Lagoon. It's not quite so green right now because there's not much wind kicking up all the minerals that are in there, but it's still a very beautiful place. And it's here that unfortunately our group is going to split into two. Half the group are going to head into Chile towards San Pedro de Atacama, and our group's going to head back to a uni, jump on a night bus, and head back to La Paz. So we've got a few more stops to do along the way, and we're going to continue to check out this amazing place in the Bolivian Altiplano, and then uh, next stop, a uni. So I thought we'd show you guys what the hot springs were that we were chilling out in last night. Really cool, nice, natural sulfur water coming up. Really warm, about 35 degrees. So it was really nice last night when it was like around zero to be chilling out in there and looking up the stars. And the views during the day actually are really nice. You got some flamingos chilling out there by the lake too. And of course you couldn't come to the Rock Valley without climbing a rock, so we've just shimmied up here. It's not quite the highest one, that one's a little bit higher, but a little bit more technical to get up, but it's a fun little scramble to get up here and the views are unreal. Well that's it for our Salt Flat Adventures. We had an absolute blast. Thanks for watching guys and we highly recommend the Salt Flats. If you're in Bolivia, do not miss this place. It is so worth it. Data for that. On the floor. Okay, stand up. Wait on them. Jump! Okay, close the port from up down slowly. Down! If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications as we bring out a new video every week. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you on the next adventure.